Greetings gastronauts, this is Keith Cook, so I'm Keith, and today I'm going to show you something absolutely unbelievably marvellous, possibly the ultimate beef pie, beef wellington, or if you are French, beef en croute. <laughs> Well, you know, it's not really a pie, but my, my definition of a pie says a pie is a filling totally enclosed by pastry, and so that ticks all the boxes. However, uh, it's a really, truly marvellous thing, um, an absolute whiz for a dinner party or a, you know, a special occasion. Yeah, so this, this dish is, is one for when you want to really push the boat out because the main ingredient, the beef fillet, will you may need to take out a mortgage to get some. It's astoundingly expensive. However, my lovely, lovely butcher let me have some for 10 euros a kilo. <laughs> Lucky me. Anyway, so the ingredients are a big chunk of fillet steak. This is only about 600 grams which is going to be more than plenty for me and the wife, believe me. <laughs> uh, some mushrooms, not your average button mushrooms, but, um, you know, I've got some shiitakes and some uh, cultivated wild mushrooms <laughs> and half an onion. And some puff pastry, you can buy it or you can bake it yourself. I made this. I've also got some clarified butter, salt, pepper, thyme and mustard. Yeah, get rid of that rotten bit in the middle. Blip. And chop it, chop it as uh, finely as, as you can. You could actually do this in a blender, but you run the risk of turning your mushroom and onion mix into a smoothie. <laughs> we don't want that. We want to get it almost minced okay so this is the onion and that will more or less do and now we do the same thing to the mushrooms right mushrooms and onion and a pinch of salt some time. <laughs> I hate these little sprinkly things, they're just, they give the people the wrong idea because, you know, with herbs and that, you need lots. Pepper. And we're going to stir that all up and then we're going to fry it because we want to get this into a state of being like a dry paste and mushrooms contain tons of water so that has to go frying pan a splash of oil medium heat and the duxel mixture and we're just going to cook this gently for probably 10 to 15 minutes until all the moisture is gone and it's it's a thick and sticky paste Right, the uh, duxel is cooked and so we just pop it into a container and we'll stick that in the fridge to cool down. So now we have the star of the show, the fillet. And um, ideally we would have a, a bigger rounder piece, but um, you know, for what I paid for this, <laughs> I can't argue. However, um, and it's amazingly expensive stuff. In the UK, you could pay between 30 and 50 pounds a kilo for this stuff. And the, re the reason it's so expensive is it's, it's, so, it's so tender. There's no, there's no fat, there's no gristle. Uh, there's a bit of silver skin on here, which I'm gonna trim off. And you know, it's, it's tenderness is, is amazing. You can eat this raw and people do, that's what, when you mince it, that's what steak tartare is. And, uh, wow, it's just fantastic. So this, this comes from a muscle that runs 
along both sides of the spine of the Coo Beastie. It does no work whatsoever, which is why it is so tender. So now what we need to do is sear this on all sides. So, frying pan, high heat, and some clarified butter. If you don't know how to clarify butter, I've got a recipe on my website, and the link should be on the screen now. And uh, the reason we use clarified butter is that it has a higher smoke point than normal butter, so it doesn't burn as easily. Okay, let's uh, pop in the beef. Don't forget to do the ends. Now, while it's still hot, I'm just going to cover it as much as possible with mustard. And now that goes in the fridge to cool down until we're ready for it. Right, the ductile is cool enough to work with and so is the beef. So now I've got loads of plastic film stuck together and we're going to spread out the duct cell in a, an even layer that's no wider than the beef. And we pop the beef on, on that and wipe the mustard off our fingers and roll it as tightly as you can and not to get the cling film rolled inside the roll because that wouldn't be good and twizzle it oh okay now some more film and just get the get those ends inside and then that goes back in the fridge to chill again for at least another half hour right so now we're ready to assemble the beef wellington and the first thing to do is roll out the pastry into a, a big old rectangle. So we'll just straighten up the edges with the, the steel ruler. This just makes the whole thing look a bit neater. Now we want some water, cold water. And we want our beef wrapped in the mushroom duck cell. And we place that on the pastry and just fold it into a kind of a parcel. Okay, that's good. So I'll wet the, um, the edge and then we'll just smooth that down to, to seal it. And for the ends, we don't need all this extra pastry, it'll be too thick. So I'll just kind of trim some of it off and we'll get a, a result like that. It's a bit like wrapping a Christmas present. And smooth that down. And do the same at the other end. Okay, stick. Right, there we go. <coughs> So all, all, the, uh, all the seams of the joints go on the bottom. And now you, you could actually just bake it like that, just stick some holes in to uh, let the steam escape. But um, I'm gonna do a, a spot of decoration because it's a chefy thing. Uh, so what, we, what we'll do is we'll just, um, we'll cut some lines into the pastry, not all the way through, obviously. And it's important that you do this before you glaze it because then the pastry expands and the decoration is apparent. Okay, we're ready to finish this off. And so I'm gonna glaze it with beaten egg. Now, you might have come across recipes where it suggests or insists that you uh, wrap the beef in uh, crepes or little pancakes. Gordon Ramsay is a devotee of that method and the, the reason for doing it, allegedly, is to stop the bottom from becoming soggy. Now, now I come from Planet Pie and I don't mind a soggy bottom, actually. I think it enhances it because it's absorbed the wonderful meaty juices and flavours. And the other thing you'll see is uh, pâté, even pâté de foie gras. Uh, stuck on the top of your, your beef 
um, I, I just think that that is ridiculous that is way over the top in terms of richness so I've got the oven preheated to 230 degrees Celsius and I'm going to stick this in for about a half an hour okay here's our amazing beef wellington and it says moo <laughs> I'm going to let that rest for about 10 minutes um, just to let everything settle down a bit. Well, look at this. I would say that is damn near perfect. Absolutely amazing. Medium rare beef, still bleeding. Nice soggy bottom, crispy crust. Four. Phenomenal. That's all folks, if you liked it please share it with all your buddies on social media and please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest and don't forget the amazing website that has all the details about everything. And thank you for watching!